Hey there. I just had an interesting conversation with someone. I came up at random and just shot the shit, so to speak, and uh, it's kind of neat. Um, anyway, uh, I mean, I, I, I like it when someone at random just starts a conversation with me. I like that. I, I enjoy that. It doesn't happen out here very often. It happened a lot, though, when I was in Eureka. That's one of the things I liked about it there. Anyway, um, so uh, I wanted to talk about a number of things in this video. One of them being emotional honesty. Um, to me, if someone is truly emotionally honest and upfront about what their emotions are at the time in any sort of discussion, it automatically forces someone to be more intellectually honest. Um, oh my god, bro, I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> um, dude. Okay. Uh, having a good time, though. Uh, Where was I? Uh, I get distracted easy, don't I? But one of the things about being emotionally honest is being upfront when you're hurt by something. And there are some people who make it sound like if you show that you're hurt by something, you admit that you're hurt by something, that that makes you weak, that it makes you a sissy, a wussy, or whatever, and it's just like, it's only that way if, if you use it as a method of being defeated. You can show that you're hurt by something without making it seem like, oh, well, you, you uh, beat me, you pwned me, or whatever. Um, or... People who try to shove forth, well, I'm offended at that, therefore your argument is invalid. Yeah, that's that's crap, too. Um, but, like, you know, there are people who will claim that if someone admits that, oh, they're butthurt over something, which I think butthurt is a strange, a strange term to begin with. It's kind of a little bit homophobic in nature, um, or at least... Well, it's against anal sex anyway, because anal sex doesn't necessarily represent homosexuality. It can. I mean, it's part of what's known as in, within gay sex, but it's not necessarily... I don't know. Um, but to me, it just kind of has some slight homophobic connotations. But it's just... Anyway, whether the word is has these connotations or not, I know, I know the way that it's generally used, so... I don't see anything wrong with someone admitting that they're butthurt about something. But the lot, way a lot of people will put things is if, well, oh, you're butthurt, aren't you? As if, oh, well, you're defeated, aren't you? Oh, we pwned you, didn't we? Well, the only way that you someone gets pwned in that sort of manner is if they were proven wrong about something and not with a bunch of straw men. I'm trying to cover the microphones a little bit so you don't get quite as bad of wind because it's very windy everyone knows it's windy so but there's a there are some things that a number of feminists will try to talk about in ways that is quite unfortunate is some of the unfortunate things that we teach men to be in this society and one of them is that you never admit when you're hurt by something. Um, you're emotionally hurt by something. And I understand, you know, if you're in, a, I, I've, as I've said before in other videos, if you're in a position where, you know, uh, 
breaking down, oh, I'm so hurt, and then you, you can't do what you need to do. You can't do your job, you can't help a person with something, you can't just do what's necessary, then yeah, that's kind of messed up, but to to just simply admit to yourself and others that uh, you were hurt by something, I don't see that as being a problem. And to me, if you are able to admit that you're hurt about something immediately, you can then say, well, this is the emotional state I'm in right now, but I have this argument, and I understand that I'm in this emotional state, so take what I'm about to say in the context of, I feel like this right now. Because a lot of people will pretend that they don't feel that way, and then the argument they make is colored by their emotion. But when they don't admit it, it can come out in ways that they don't necessarily intend. And that within itself can make someone uh, intellectually dishonest. So, anyway. Um, but you know, part of that, this whole element of how guys feel that they're not supposed to admit when they've been hurt is part of that phrase that I can't stand this phrase. I can't stand it uh, when feminists say this, but it's, it's when they say toxic masculinity. That's you know, that whole sort of thing is part of the toxic masculinity thing. I hate that phrase, because it has really, truly has some negative connotations, as if uh, masculinity itself is toxic, which it is, which it is clearly not. But um, that whole thing is a part of that. Uh, the unwillingness to show when you're hurt by something. Um, that is... Uh, covering up your emotions, hiding your emotions. And there is definitely a push for this. Some people will say, well, well, nobody's pushing this forth. Yes, they are. It's pushed forth all the time. If someone, uh, if a guy admits that they were hurt by something, emotionally hurt by something, they are considered weak, or if they're arguing against something, someone with something, the other person will basically claim that they pwned them. I know I'm kind of repeating myself here and there, but I want to be thorough in this, so... Anyway... You know, I was certainly hurt by... when the drunken peasants on their website uh, compared me, made me, put me in the same category as Brett Keane. I'm like Brett Keane because I don't like the format of their show. Okay. <laughs> whatever um, but I'm, I'm a little hurt by that maybe I shouldn't be but hey I, I am <laughs> I'm not going to pretend otherwise um, I'm not going to pretend not to be hurt by uh, when Quintka continues his same shit even when I it, it, later on it was just a couple weeks ago or was it a week and a half ago you know I apologized to him again saying hey, hey look uh, I I probably hurt you when I did the whole blocking thing, and uh, this is why. And I explained some of the things that I said in my video about uh, what makes me tick. And uh, he responded with the same shit again, which was basically, uh, he thinks I'm worthless, useless, in that, that uh, libertarian way, uh, viewpoint of what gives someone worth. and. Uh, And I know that's making a generalization about libertarianism, I, I understand that, but I'm sure you know what I'm saying. Um, where he said, I'm, I have no worth, and that um, I need to care about my appearance and care about my smell and all that sort of thing. And I'm like, I do care about those things, that's why they're the way they are. This is all on purpose, this is all the way that I want to be. But to him, um, well, anyone who feels differently than he does is deluded. And yet, and yet, if anyone else shoves forth things the same arrogant way that he does, he's outraged. Like if fat acceptance people try to claim that uh, liking thin bodies isn't normal, 
well, he's just, he's just gonna throw a tissy fit over that shit. And that's what all this whole thing between me and Aquintica started off in the first place, so... He is quite the hypocrite as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, his statements like that, that hurt me. Um, and then most recently with uh, Beagle Eye 1975, who I, I still like and I still recommend subscri you subscribe to his channel. He may have a, he, you may completely disagree with everything he says, but he, I like his honesty, even if I disagree with it. Um, but Eagle Eye 1975 has been on this thing, he's made three videos on it. Um, each around somewhere between, you know, 16 and 24 minutes or so. Um, so he's like probably spent a good hour talking about his view of uh, well, maybe not quite 60 minutes maybe it's about 40 minutes out of the ones that he's he's made about this but talking about how how to him it seems it seems and I might be wrong about his view on this but it seems that he thinks that the only value or worth that someone has is how much money they make and not what it is that they do for society or do for other people or that sort of thing. It's like, and I can't really wrap my mind around that. Uh, to me, people have a lot more worth than the, um, than the amount of money they put into circulation or take out of circulation or whatever. There's the people's worth and value is a lot more than that. Um, you know, we have volunteerism. People that do things out of the kindness of their hearts and they don't really want any compensation for it. They just want to be helpful. They want to help society. Um, you know, I, I, I mean... Look at Tesla. Look at all the things Tesla has done for society. And that guy, he, he could have been multi-millionaire, but he chose to just try to be helpful and to try to offer things um, that could help society in some way. Um, you've got all these... Uh, there are a lot of artists out there who, during the time that they were alive, they didn't make shit for money. They were poor, they were just barely scraping by, but they still pushed forth for their art. And under the standards that Eagle Eye 1975 seems to be talking about, those people um, had no worth. They ended up having more worth after they're dead because their their paintings or drawings or uh, or music or whatever uh, was then making money. Oh, well, that means they're worth that much that way. Well, so during the time they were alive, they're not worth anything. If, if someone is worth more when they're dead than when they're alive, there's something kind of wrong with that approach to looking at people as far as I'm concerned. And if, if looking at people as far, as far as their worth and their value is judged on how much they can add to the economy, then, uh, you know, in this way that he talks about, then that guy, I can't remember his name, he uh, bought out a pharmaceutical company and then uh, raised the price on an important medication by 5,000%. Um, that guy was successful. That guy distributed a lot of money uh, because he, you know, puts it in banks and then invests in other things and ch and price gouges those things so they're not affordable. But he makes money, so. Um, and then you could probably do the same argument you have in the past. Well, you know, who are we to judge how much money something is worth? Uh, the market will decide. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> just take some item that you think is worth uh, that that's that's market value in this country is worth a lot of money and take it to a country where uh, people are just trying to scrape by and uh, see how much those things are worth there <laughs> um, well cam is starting to get warm so we'll see what happens with this but um, but one of the main things that uh, Eagle Eye 1975 seems to shove forth is this idea that shaming is somehow a good tactic to get people to change. Well, that only works on people who have a really, really good self-esteem. It only works on those people. People who don't have a very good self-esteem, all the shaming does is pretty much destroy them. And most people who are not adding very much to the economy know that they're not adding very much to the economy. So giving them a guilt trip about it, I mean, that's like the bad stereotype of some nagging wife or something, you know? And if, if that's the view that he really holds, then I gotta say, if I ever hear him complain about how so many women in this country are taught to look at men as pocketbooks, if I ever hear him complaining about that, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to read him the riot act. I'm going to verbally tear him a new asshole if, if that's what he starts to shove forth because that's the very sort of thing that he shoves forth as to what uh, our only value is, is how much we contribute to the economy, as if the economy itself is society and society is the economy, which those things are quite separate from each other and sometimes incompatible with each other. But... Anyway, um, but yeah, shaming. Shaming is the technique that 12-step programs use. 12-step programs are all about making someone feel as bad about themselves as possible so they can give it up to some higher power to take, help take care of that issue. But, but his method about going about it is to not even have this higher power. Let's just shame someone and then assume that they're going to uh, do what you want based off of you shaming somebody. It's a very manipulative thing to do to somebody. Uh, guilt trips suck. And he might even try to say, well, it's not a guilt trip. Well, it is. That's exactly what it is. It's shaming. It's a guilt trip. It's trying to degrade someone in order to get them to do what you want. And I think that's a fucked up thing to do. I also think it's a fucked up to think of people people's only worth as being how much they add to the economy. Because there are plenty of people in this world who have done amazing things for society, amazing things for the world, added amazing elements of technology, that we, that things that we wouldn't have, we wouldn't enjoy a lot of the stuff that we have right now if it wasn't for some of these people. And they didn't make jack shit in money. So, you know, volunteerism. But, all in all, out of a lot of these things that have been discussed, a lot of the stuff that's, that's been going on, you know, it had my self-esteem pretty much in the shitter for a little while there. And I'm really, really glad I released that video of all these pictures and stuff that I did in the past and the song that I made in 1999 uh, and some of the responses to it, because it, it, it reminded me of uh, that, hey, I'm okay. And even in my past, when I didn't have as many realizations as I have now, obviously, uh, I was still okay. I was in this mode, I was about to start uh, possibly taking some uh, anti-anxiety meds, and I was thinking, well, I must be really fucked up, I, I, I need therapy because I must be really fucked up. But uh, I'm alright. I mean, I'm not saying I can't, I, that therapy wouldn't be beneficial, but... Um, to think that I needed it and that I'm so messed up and all that stuff, you know, I'm all right. I'm okay. And I'm glad I finally came to that conclusion again. And also I'm gonna, I'm gonna regrow my hair again. <laughs> it's not nearly as thin as I had made it out to be. I've seen so many others who have really long hair, whose hair on the top of their head is much thinner than mine. So, um, I'm gonna try and grow that out again. Probably in about three or four months, you'll start to see me wear a lot of hats because it, it doesn't look so great while it's growing out. So 
Anyway, uh, blah, 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 fucking blah.